Hey everyone, Josh Tedder from Six Months Later, and I've spent the past six days with the Sony WF-1000 XM5s. I have some initial impressions, but more importantly, I've received your questions and I'm gonna answer them in this video. Waterproof, exercise-proof, battery life, ANC, especially is it windproof, okay to sleep on pillow. XM3, not good on pillow. Uh, waterproof, yes. Exercise proof, uh, yeah, should be fine. The Sony WF-1000 XM4s, which were the previous generation, which I also have here. I really liked these earbuds a lot. These were the ones that I gravitated towards wearing every day when I wasn't reviewing something else. Uh, so yeah, the, these inherit basically everything you get with these. Uh, exercise should be good with that. Uh, battery life. Now, battery life is something that I've seen a lot of people complain about with the previous generation, the XM4. The battery life is something I'll look at closer in our full six months later review of the XM5s. And if you wanna see that, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that pops in your feed. Overall though, these are rated for the same battery life as the XM4s. They're rated for eight hours on a charge and 24 hours in the case, plus a three minute quick charge gets you 60 minutes of play. In terms of ANC, which stands for active noise cancellation, uh, the noise cancellation on the XM5 so far are a bit better than the XM4s. It's not like extremely noticeable, but I would say that the XM5s are pretty darn close to the Bose QC2s, which I also have done a six months later review on. Part of the reason why the noise cancellation is so good with Sony's earbuds is not just the noise cancellation software itself, but it's also the design of the earbud. Uh, Sony uses these rubber kind of foam tips that kind of expand into your ear canal when they put them in. And what that does is it gets you a really nice seal, but uh, I think they've further improved these ear tips. I find the ear tips on the newer ones a little bit softer and I, I don't know, they feel a little bit more comfortable. Another thing that Sony did uh, that I really appreciate is the size difference between these two earbuds. The XM5s are much more comfortable to wear than the XM4s. And another thing Sony did that I really like about the XM5 ear tips that is an upgrade is they added a mesh that's further up into the ear tip itself to prevent gunk in your ears from actually traveling down to the area where the drivers are and kind of screwing up your earbuds. So if you have the XM4s, and you're thinking of upgrading, if you find their comfort to be okay and you can wear them for long periods of time and you don't have battery life issues, you probably don't need to upgrade. But if you do want a set of earbuds that have the same great sound, better noise cancellation, and better comfort in a slimmer case, uh, yeah, I would definitely already just say upgrade to the XM5s. All right, and the last part of your question, okay to sleep on a pillow. I actually think you could get away, it depends on your ear shape a little bit and just your overall comfort, uh, but these are probably the first W something, WF1000s uh, that you could probably get away but using as, you know, like noise cancellation for sleep. Um, they do stick out a little bit more though than Link Buds S. I'd probably still steer you towards if you're really looking for something to use for sleeping. The Link Buds S, you can just see on my face here, they're still way slimmer than the uh, XM5s. All right, next question. Overall versus Link Buds S and microphone and wind protection. Mic quality, um, let's go ahead and cut to a quick mic test and I'll let you determine which one you think sounds better. All right, and this is how the Sony WF-1000 XM5's mics sound. All right, and these are the Sony Link Buds S. This is how their mics sound. And then of course, again, we have the WF-1000 XM5's. Let me know down in the comments which ones you thought sounded better. Wind noise is quite a bit reduced on the XM5's compared to the XM4's. The wind noise between the Link Buds S and the XM5's pretty comparable. I always thought the Link Buds S did a pretty good job at canceling out wind noise. Uh, the XM5s do a really good job there as well. Basically, the XM5s are just kind of a souped up version of the Link Buds S. If you look at the Link Buds S overall design, they're a bit slimmer and lighter, which I still like and prefer, but their battery life is not going to be as good as the XM5s. The case design, pretty darn similar, pretty similar shape. Even on the back, the XM5s now have the Bluetooth pairing button that the XM4s did not have. Sony Link Buds S case does not have wireless charging. The XM5s do. I really like that. You can just toss it on the charging pad. You don't have to worry about 
finding a USB-C cable. I think the sound is quite a bit better on the XM5s than the Link Buds S. That's really a major differentiator between these two, uh, that and battery life. So that would be, if, if that's something of interest to you, that's what would personally steer me back towards the XM5s over the Link Buds S. If you don't really care about premium sound quality in earbuds, or you're fine with a little bit less battery life, then the Link Buds S are likely gonna be a better choice for you. All right, next question, how much better than the XM4s? Okay, uh, this is a great question. So where the XM5s really deliver in terms of just being better than the XM4s for me are wind noise, the noise cancellation is a bit better than the XM4s, and Sony really did improve the mic quality. Let's do a cut to the mic quality between the XM4s and the XM5s. All right, and this is how the Sony WF-1000 XM5s mics sound. And these are the Sony WF-1000 XM4s, the previous version of the XM5s, and this is how their mics sound. And then of course, again, we have the WF-1000 XM5s. Let me know down in the comments which ones you thought sounded better. Plus, the XM5s can control volume now by continuously tapping the right or left earbud for volume up or down. Not only is the case of the XM5 slimmer than the XM4s, but just the aesthetics of the case, I think Sony did just a bit better job with on the XM5s than the XM4s. Not that the XM4 case was bad, but just the, the, the matte material of the XM5s case, I think just looks really slick. All right, and next question, I love this question. How are they in comparison with the Pixel Buds Pro? Ah, the Pixel Buds Pro. The main differentiators between the XM5s and the Google Pixel Buds are one going to be the software features. Google does have specific software features, especially if you have a Pixel device that the Sony XM5s are not gonna be able to match. So there is that. The XM5s fit compared to the Pixel Buds Pro are a little bit more snug in your ear canal. They create a tighter seal, which then of course means they have better noise cancellation. Sound quality, I still think Sony does a better job on than the Pixel Buds Pro as well. Now, if you don't like the feeling of things being a little bit farther into your ear canals, that's where you may like the fit of the Pixel Buds Pro. How's the transparency mode compared to the AirPods Pro 2? Well, unfortunately the AirPods Pro 2 are like the only earbuds I do not have in my possession. Part of the reason is that design that Apple has, just I'm one of those people, I put them in my ear in like five to 10 minutes, my ear just really hurts. But I do have the AirPods Max sitting on my desk. And those out of any audio device I've ever tried have the best transparency mode. It sounds like you're not even wearing headphones. How do the XM5 sound compared to that? Uh, pretty comparable. The XM5s have one of the best transparency modes I've ever heard on a pair of earbuds. One thing I look at with transparency mode is, am I able to assess like how good my own volume is? And these do a pretty good job. So even though I'm wearing them with transparency mode on now, uh, I'm talking in a normal voice. I'm not like talking too loud or too quiet if the transparency mode is really just like really amplifying all your ambient sound. You don't want that either. Uh, these are pretty good. All right, next question. Is there a replaceable battery? You could change it in the XM3s, the XM4s not anymore. Uh, like the XM4s, unfortunately, uh, from what I've been able to find, no. It's clearly not designed to be easily user replaceable, uh, which is unfortunate. You're really seeing in the industry, in tech in general, a gradual shift partially because of regulation, but also partially just because of consumer demand to more self-repairable tech design. Sonos's new speakers, you're gonna start seeing that in smartphones, and then you even have something like the Framework 16, which is a laptop that I've pre-ordered. It's a Windows PC that you can take the entire thing apart with a single screwdriver. Pretty challenging though for earbuds just because of their sheer size. You're probably gonna see more user replaceable batteries in tech products are slightly larger, where it's easier to swap out adhesives for screws, more metal parts, things like that. All right, and last question here, what are the best option for earbuds, 200 US dollars and up, and where do they rank with other $300 and up earbuds? So best $200 and up earbuds. I think for iPhone users, the AirPods Pro, I think they're right around that $200 mark. Those are probably gonna be the best bang for your buck there. Another really good option are the Sony Link Buds S. Their sound quality is not as good as your higher end 
earbuds. I love their overall ergonomic design. I also have the Samsung Galaxy Buds Pro 2. I'll have a six months later review of these coming out within the next few weeks. Um, the, the only thing there is their noise cancellation. I don't think is as good as the Link Buds, but you do get more software integration with Samsung's phones than you'll get with Sony's earbuds. So, or specifically if you have a Pixel, I actually do think the Pixel Buds Pro are a good option as well. And their mic quality is very good. They do also have a design that's gonna sit a little bit farther outside your ear canal. Um, they are a little bit bigger though in your ears as well. I don't think their design is as comfortable as the Link Buds S, which is probably why the Link Buds S would edge out my recommendation just in general, unless you really want the software features of the Pixel Buds, then yeah, I would go with those. Now for the XM5s, uh, the only other like really high-end earbuds that I have with me right now are the Bose QC2s. That's because these have been considered the best noise canceling earbuds that you can get. Where do these fit? I think these fit right neck and neck with their noise cancellation. The case design is much better on Sony's part. I mean, just look at how much bigger the Bose case is compared to this. Which one do you want in your pocket when you're, you know, traveling, going about the city? Definitely these. These also don't have wireless charging, which I'm just like, that also gives points to the XM5's design. And then ergonomics, I actually think Bose did a really good job with the ergonomics of their design. Like they don't sit as far into your ear canal, which I think most people would find more comfortable than the Sony's design. The only thing that I don't like about the Bose with their design is they're just a bit larger. Their mic quality sucks compared to Sony's. And I've had other issues with them. You can click the card up here to see uh, the review of these. So yeah, for $300 and up, if I was doing this all over again, what would I be looking at after I've tried out all of these? I would still be looking at the Sony's. All right, and that was the last question. Let me know in the comments how you like this format and style video. This is something new for us, kind of doing a check-in at the beginning of our review period before we do our full in-depth six months later review. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel to see the full six months later review of the Sony WF-1000 XM5s. And you can get to more of our reviews on audio devices and speakers by clicking the videos above. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.